Hi, I'm Katrin. Welcome to my channel. My passion is storytelling and that is what you find on my channel. I do the overall story of Margit Sandemo's book series, The Legend of the Ice People. It's a fantastic family saga which extends over several centuries. That is what I'm going to look into in my video today. Every book in this story stands on its own. You can come into the story anytime. So far we have followed Sul's journey from the Lindali to Copenhagen in Denmark. Many things happened during her stay there. She found a missing child. She went on a secret meeting which turned out to be a disappointment for her. But she took the chance to practice some witchcraft on them. She starts working and then just before she was about to leave and go back to Norway, she was accused of being a witch. So now she's on the run. Her landlord's Count and Countess Strathelheim helped her escape by sending her with the king's men to Skåne. From there she will take the boat to Norway. But Sul is not in a hurry. She plans to visit the hills of Brösarp, the place Hanna had told her about. The first night in Skåne they made camp. When they were asleep they got attacked and Sul kidnapped. Jakob Skille came to her rescue. And Jorgen, he was injured and they need to find help for him. They turned south again and found a little village. A farmer and his family promised to take care of him while Skille went to the house of Glimminge and Sol to the hills of Brösarp. It was still night and when the rain started to pour down they made a stop at the boathouse by the shore. During the night, under the davit, things started to happen. Skille mixed his dream up with the present and Sol was awake and let things happen. The next day they continued their journey. Skille took the road to the house of Glimminge and sold the road to hills of Brösarp. They agreed to meet here in a few days. Sol found the place she was looking for, but the witches were gone. It was about sixty years since they changed place for their meetings. Sol got the direction from an old couple and is now out looking for the place. She is also looking for the herb, black nightshade, that she needs for her trip to Blåkulla. On the way to Tollat, she heard the voices in the forest. She found a group of soldiers catching a young woman. When Sol heard her cry, she came to her rescue. Meta, the young woman, explained the way to Anska's gorge to her. Before Sol continued the journey on her own, she made sure that Meta was thoroughly cleaned. She was now free from both lies and fleas. Meta warned her of the abyss and who lives there. But Sol was not worried at all. She is more eager and ex expectant. Back home in Norway, Liv has married Lorenz Berenius. Liv realized almost immediately that this marriage will not be a happy one. Every day it gets worse and worse. Today I will pick up with Liv back in Oslo. The rain over Oslo have stopped, but Liv was standing by the window again. She did not have much else to do. She did not dare to do anything. Her mother-in-law had surprisingly left home for a while. She visited a neighbor to hear some gossip. Someone came in through the front door. It was the characteristic bang that announced Lauren's return home. Leave shrugged. The chest pain increased. But she got ready to meet her husband and she did so with a smile. Good day, Berenius, she greeted him. You are home early. She was not allowed to call him Lawrence because he thought it was so vulgar. Liv thought the opposite, but did as he said, as usual. 
He lit up when he saw her. He put his arm around her. How beautiful that dress is on you, just as I thought it would. Is my little angel well today? Well, she answered with a frozen smile. Just good, thank you, but I am a little sad when you're not home. He turned away impatiently. Ha-ha, <laughs> you have heard that before. I do everything for you, carry you on my arms, and you have no worries, no worries. You do not have to do anything, and yet you complain. Forgive me, whispered Sleeve. I will not do that again. Um, can you tell me a little about uh, today's work? He laughed. <laughs> I would bore you with that. You would not understand a word of what I said. Do not be stupid now, Liv. Mm, now I just mean a, a wife should share her husband's life and difficulties. I would love to do that. <laughs> no, we share life at home. What is outside is my area. But I am good at counting, she said eagerly, and I write nicely, it is said. Isn't there something I can help you with in the office, so we can be together? Then I also get the opportunity to get out a little among pe Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. His face had become like a thundercloud, and with a jerk he tore down a riding whip from the wall. Leave who have felt it before, whined like a puppy and ran away from him, flew from room to room, helplessly mourning with her husband on her heels. Stop, he shouted angrily. Stop, your ungrateful girl. Leave was crowded into a corner. The whip swept through the air, not hard, but stingingly enough. How dare you suggest that you can be of any help in my work? He hissed with foam in his mouth. Count you a wife? How dare you be so presumptuous? Liv curled up in the corner. At the sight of her helplessness, his anger passed. He dropped the whip and grabbed her hand. No, no, look what I have done with my little pigeon, he said remorsefully. Oh, your little hand is bleeding. He kissed her bloody hand. He pulled her closer to him. So, do not cry, my little pigeon. You have a strong man beside you, and I am going to take care of everything. You know that I love you over everything on earth, and just want to, to do you all your best for you. It hurts so much when I have to discipline you, but we must get rid of your stupid ideas, eh, right? Leave stood up. She nodded, but her eyes were like those of an injured animal. Now everything is fine again, and tonight, my dear, we will have some fun, right? The pigeon does not deny her husband that, does she? With the greatest willpower, she held back a shudder. She knew these fun moments, they were just for him. She would be grateful and admire him. The sun has already set, but there was still some daylight left. She stood by a deep ravine, far, far from people's houses, deep in the most difficult wilderness. She was tired, hungry, and discouraged after wandering around all afternoon and evening. What was she really looking for? This abandoned place? Never had she felt so lonely as now. The old story of the witches gathered a long time ago. She was the only one left. What was she doing here? With a sigh, she looked down into the depths. Charred remains of an often lit wood at the bottom of the ravine spoke their clear language. This must be Anska's gorge, hardly the Anskar who christened the north countries, and there was no abyss either. 
Soul could see the whole bottom from her place. It was intact, but grassy. Could it be that it still existed? No, this must be traces of lumberjacks or coal workers. She could not imagine anything else now. But in her great solitude, in this foreign land, deep in the forest, Sol was determined to meet up on her own, at this place, the next evening when the moon was full. Maybe she could receive some message or the vibration from the dead, from those who were haunted and who met here almost hundred years ago. She wanted to feel a closeness to these souls, she who was a foreign bird in the world of ordinary people. She was sad, but she went on to find a place to spend the night for her and the horse. The full moon stood over the sea, over the hills of Brösarp and over Anska's gorge. Deep in the dark, mysterious forest, the wind have increased, so it flutters in Sol's hair. She have dressed completely in black, and the hair she have taken from the dead robber she have tied at the top of the long sturgeon. The tuft of hair whispered and slammed against the sturgeon in the strong wind. It was Thursday night, and she was walking through the forest towards Anska's gorge. Almost immediately, she smelled a bonfire. And as she got closer, she saw a thick loop of smoke billowing out of the gorge and spreading out into the treetops. Her heart began to beat hard. Lumberjacks, she thought. But why would they be out here at night? Coal miners, she thought. But she have not seen any coal mine down there. Sol stopped at the edge of the ravine. Down there the fire burned. Three people sat around it. Three lonely people. Two of them were women. She could see that they were talking and they poked sticks into the fire. Soul closed her eyes and exhaled in a sizzling, trembling sigh. It was witches. It could not be anything else. She stood still for a long time. Soon they will see me, she thought. I must look quite dramatic where I stand with my hair and coat fluttering in the wind and with my sturgeon raised. I have the moon behind me too. Soul have always had a mind for the dramatic. One of the women looked up and pointed excitedly at her. The other two got up frightened but remained calm while Soul went down the steep slope. Unsure she approached them. She stayed a short distance from them, handed over to them to value her. A long silence followed. Sol noticed how nice it was to get down to the fire and the windless ravine. <laughs> so, said the woman, who never got up in a rough voice. Welcome, daughter of the ice people, Sol jerked. Do you know me? Do you know the ice people? The woman asked her with a gesture to take a seat, and the other two sat down as well. No, I do not know you. The old woman smiled crookedly. But the name of the ice people is highly valued in our circles, and no one can mistake their eyes. But as far as I know, they lived in Trönelag until they were exterminated fifteen years ago. How can you be here now? It's a long story, said Sol, but I had heard about the witches at the hills of Brösar from my old relative Hanna, and since it's almost just me left from the real ice people, I have longed for this moment all my life. Hanna? said the old witch. She was wrapped in dark shawls and a coat. You could barely see her face. 
Hanna. Well, my grandmother, who was one of us, had heard of a girl named Hanna from the ice people. She who had great skills. It must be her, don't you think? Yes, I am sure. Everything I can, I have learned from Hanna. The other woman said, But how did you find your way here from Pyrrhusarp? Sol smiled. He who only has one wish in life, make sure to have it fulfilled. <laughs> well, I got help from an old couple. They helped me because they understood what I was and that this was important to me. Do not worry, they are not friends with the authorities. <laughs> That's good, said the woman. Sol was so happy that she could almost die. They offered her food, simple bread and water, and she could study them more closely while they ate. They asked questions and told things eagerly. The old woman was smooth and fine in her skin as a youth, but her hair was white and she had no teeth left. The other woman was middle-aged but in miserable health. Sol was afraid she would collapse where she sat. She was pale and thin, and neither the shawls nor the fire seemed to give her enough warmth. Her hair was grey, blonde and frizzy, and her facial skin has collapsed under her eyes and around her mouth and along her jaw. Her cough was dry, and she coughed all the time. The man was strangely quiet type. It was hard to see how he was as a human being. He was tall and thin. His face was long with sad eyes. His wrist carried deep traces of the soldier's iron. But her visit seemed to please them. When Sol talked about her adventure, she wanted to hear more about theirs and what she heard was about a miserable life in constant flight and hiding. The moon had disappeared from their sight. The night was dark around them, twice as dark because of the small safe world of the fire. I think that we stop here for today. Finally, she had found people as herself. They will definitely be able to help her find the black nightshade. I am sure about that. So she can do her trick to Blokulla. Next on my channel I will look into the next episode of Fear the Walking Dead, The Holding. The last episode ended with Danielle leaving the safe place. He decided to follow Strand back to Lawton. Then I will continue with Margit Sandemo's book series The Legend of the Ice People and the book Stepdaughter, The Abyss. I will pick up exactly where I left Sol, sitting by the bonfire, with three witches at Anska's Gorge. Some of my videos are published for a long time, others are removed quite quickly. If you don't want to miss anything or if you just want to support my channel, subscribe and click on the notification bell. I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you so much for stopping by. Stay safe out there and welcome back.